So, you was here to fix the pipes? What do we get? The idea of the move art first came to me uh, as I was moving house. I uh, had a traffic jam with a car full of boxes or stuff, and uh, I just uh, had the idea of, uh, you know, what if it was a, uh, a mission, like a, 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 a job no one knew about. Um, and it's been something I've wondered about for a long time. Yeah, there must be people that do a job like that. For people who have to get away somewhere, who have a lot of possessions, there's no way they want to give it all up. Um, there has to be someone, like a baggage man, who they send back to get stuff like that. And uh, that's where the initial idea for the film came from. I didn't find it very difficult getting into the role of the mover because, um, you know, you just got to, when you get in a part like that, you just got to let yourself go, don't you? So, you know, I thought, well, you know, I'm in this movie, I've got the part, and I thought, well, it's another one to do, so I thought, well, I may as well do it and get on with it. And I thought, well, you know, turn up on set, in roll, walk off set, out roll, easy. Does he not want to jog? <laughs> no. Oh, the movie don't jog, does he drive? <laughs> Upwards and onwards. <laughs> it was interesting having Sam playing in the movie as well, because just a couple of years ago, I probably wouldn't have for Sam for playing this part, but um, I saw him in the guitar man, Michael Schmelz on the guitar man, and I um, was really surprised by how good he was, um, really quite impressed. Um, so he seemed you know, a natural choice for making a, my first uh, quick short film. Some of the stuff in the script didn't quite make it in. Um, part of the, the opening sequence with um, the opening narration I was supposed to be in France, who was supposed to be doing a job in France. It's not majorly to do with the plot, it was just to sort of set the scene at the start. Uh, it would have been good though, um, but ultimately we just decided it would be too time consuming and just too expensive to do. I've got to say my, f my favourite scene in the, in the film has got to be um, when the uh, stabbing's done. Because it's felt really like funny and really, really simple. And it's like, Appeals to me and things like that, you know. <laughs> that was looking really fucking good then. I looked at me, did that. I did it again. <laughs> Gotta say, my favourite line is uh, So what am I at the end? Because one, it's the only one I can remember, and two, it's quite short, and I don't have to fuck around with it a lot. It did go over schedule. Um... Probably by a couple of months. Um, I intended to make it really quickly um, in the space of about one month, um, just as a bit of practice really for, for Remnants, which is our first full length film. Uh, but we started now. Uh, but um, yeah, they did overlap. We did, we'd already started Remnants by, by the time we finished the movie. I think the mover and the guitar man are both different and similar, and both different and similar in different and similar ways because. You got two short films with the same actor playing um, different roles, but um, it's like a bit the same sort of thing. So it's like quite the same work, and with the two directors, they're pretty much the same as well, and same sort of style, same everything really. So yeah, <laughs> easy. <laughs> <laughs> Did it turn round again with a gun? <laughs> Your hair's in your face, just get your hair out of your face. A little more scared. Are <laughs> you serious? Yeah, I'm going. Oh. <laughs> Funny. Can't do it. Oh, right. Right. Do you want to go? Yeah. <laughs> What's it like? It's just... I'm trying to do it seriously. Right, it's tough. I'm scared. Yeah, it's good. Let's get a little bit of 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 a little bit
I think Ed's brilliant there, that ending. He, he really wanted more screen time. He, he was really hoping his character, uh, the Hitman, could get in it a bit more. But I think he has a lot of impact you know, when he shows up at the end. Um, and uh, no dialogue at all, just that stare, mad stare. I think that works really well. I think I think any more, and it would lose some of its impact. So uh, I just promised her to have a bigger part in the, in the next film. operating pretty much a shoot to kill policy of anyone who looks suspicious um, in terms of terrorism. You know, you've got to watch out when you're doing this little guerrilla filmmaker thing. At the same time you don't want to inform anyone you're making a film in case there's some council law or, or rule that means you have to pay to make a film, which is precisely what everyone's trying to avoid here, making a, a no budget film. I think mean, John is very good. John, um, I mean, he's he only has about one line of dialogue in this, but um, he's very good in his uh, driving scenes and um, his, his uh, death scene at the end when Ed stabs him. Um, he, um, he came in very late. Um, his part was um, originally written for someone else. Um, he couldn't do it um, in the limited time he had to make this film uh, before going on to Remnant. Um, so he came in and did it. Um, did it really well. It was really helpful. Um, yeah. It's a good performance um, in quite a, a limited role, but um, I think he fit in quite well. And um, there's a good sort of dynamic between him and Sam. Um, sometimes they find it quite hard to work. Hey, you alright? Yeah. How's it going? Fair to medium. <laughs> 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 fair to medium. <laughs> <laughs> I do care. <laughs> fair to medium. Hi. Where you been? What are you doing? Alright, oh, go on then. gun for anything but protection and for show. It's a just in case thing. I've never fired it, never needed to. I suppose that's the main reason I don't consider myself a criminal. Not a bad guy anyway. I think by the time Sam did the voiceover, he was really quite tired of this film. He'd been working on it for, I mean, it had gone on much longer than it was supposed to. It was months. And uh, the voiceover was, was one of the last things we did. Um, I think there was one scene that could see uh, the scene with the detective and the money man, well that was the last one we filmed, the last scene we filmed. Um, but, yeah, the narration was probably the last thing we did before that. And he was really tired of it by then. He had to, he had to do some of it again, 
um, because he, he has a tendency to sort of read it out and rush through it. And it just sounded like he was reading it off a page. So he redid it, he did read it all once, and then a few other bits we changed and took some stuff away and added some stuff after that just to make it fit the, um, the current edit of the film at the time. And then I sort of chopped it off and moved it around the film later on. Um, not that it didn't make sense how it was before, but it just it just fitted a bit better the way I, the way I changed it um, in the final edit. John was um, one of the first people to start work on Remnants. Um, John and John and Mike, who produced the movie, um, was acting in Remnants. Um, they started filming their scenes for Remnants because they're the two of the biggest parts in it. Um, a lot earlier than everyone else, they were making that, um, so the movie was still going on at the same time, so they were really busy as well. <laughs> How dare you? Yeah, that was good.